there are six types of monster effects. Flip effect, earn effect, trigger effect, cost effect, continuous effect, counter effect. One, flip effect. Flip effect, continue. From the picture you saw earlier with the word flip on it, I'll give you a visual demonstration of how you initiate a flip and how the effect activates. Okay, let's now talk about flip effects. So, allow me to show you how to initiate a flip effect in Yu-Gi-Oh! If you can see in front of you, we have a monster that is set. A set monster is a Yu-Gi-Oh! card placed bottom side down. And the back is usually the design of the card saying Konami. So to flip it, we simply do this. There we go. The monster is flipped. Let's zoom in and read its effect. It's called Man Eater Bug. And you can see there, flip, destroy one monster. So, that action again. Flip. And there we go. So that is what a flip generally looks like. And if we go into its effect, once again, you can see there, the moment Man Eater Bug is flipped, destroy one monster on the field. So that is how flip effect monsters work in Yu-Gi-Oh! That is all. 2. Turn effect. Turn effect continued. From the picture you saw earlier, the words once per turn on it, I'll give you a visual demonstration of how once per turn works in Yu-Gi-Oh! We are now zoomed in to a monster with a turn effect. It's called Saryuja, Skulldred. Let's read that effect. This card gains effects based on the number of materials used for its link summon. 2 plus. If a monster is normal or special summoned to a zone this card points to, that monster gains 300 attack and defense. 3 plus. Once per turn, you can special summon one monster from your hand. 4 plus. When this card is link summoned, you can draw 4 cards, then place 3 cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck in any order. Let's zoom back out. And so, as you've seen there, it has a once per turn close. A once per turn close in Yu-Gi-Oh! essentially is what turn effects are. Usually, turn effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! are monsters with the wording once per turn. And so, let's initiate Saryuja's effect. So, let's initiate Saryuja's effect. I'm going to special summon a monster from my hand with Saryuja's effect, like so. And there you have it. There is a monster special summoned from my hand. Let's zoom into it. Mythic Beast Jackal King. Let's zoom back out. There you go. And so that is how you initiate once per turn closes in Yu-Gi-Oh! Three, trigger effects. Trigger effects continued. From the picture you saw earlier, the words as a chain link three or higher on it, I'll give you a visual demonstration of how trigger effects work. Okay, now we're going to talk about trigger effects. Trigger effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! are effects on monsters that are activated by a certain condition being fulfilled. So, here we go. So, let's go and read Chain Summoning and discover why it is has a trigger-like effect. Zooming into it on Chain Summoning. Activate only as a Chain Link 3 or higher. You can normal summon or set up to 3 times this turn. You cannot activate this card in multiple card slash effects. Activate with the same name that are in that chain. Okay, so this essentially means that to activate chain summoning, three or more effects need to activate. And on your third effect activation, you will activate this card from your hand. So now, let me demonstrate this. Okay, can you see this board? And beneath the spell and trap card zone, I can sh I'm showing you my hand. So now, let us demonstrate on all the steps that I'm going to do 
to be able to activate chain summoning. Step one, I'm going to activate the effect of castle link. Let's go here with castle link. Once per turn, I can target one link monster on the field, move it to a main monster zone it points to on its controller's field. Once per turn, I can switch the locations of two link monsters in my main monster zones or two link monsters in my opponent's main monster zones. Let's zoom back out. Okay, let's move Isolde to the main monster zone like so. Okay, we have successfully moved Isolde to the main monster zone. Now, let's zoom back out to our hand. So, what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is first activate Goki Rematch, like so. The effect of Goki Rematch will allow me, if we zoom into the card, right there, as you can see, to special summon two Goki monsters in my graveyard with different levels, like so. The next thing I'm going to do is activate Goki Moonsault. It is at this moment that we are going to have activate two effects in succession to activate the effect of chain summoning. And so to make it easier, I'm going to put a dice near Goki Twist Cobra. Let me zoom in to Goki Twist Cobra. Here, so the dice is going to be here in the main monster zone. And it, so essentially it's going to be at, um, you know, at number one. And it will keep on increasing with the amount of chain links that will be happening. And so when it will be at chain link two, then you will have a general idea of the time we're going to activate chain summoning to make it easier for you to see this. Okay, let's zoom back out. Alrighty then, here we go. First, I'm going to activate Goki face turn, like so. So, Goki face turn is activated, and that will be a chain link one. Give me a moment. I am going to activate Goki Moonsault. Goki Moonsault's effect allows me to return a Goki monster from my field to my hand to special summon it. This will be a chain link two, like so. As you can see there, I returned Goki Suprex. So Goki Moonsault is a chain link two. Remember, on chain link one, Octo Stretch is still activating. Now, since two chain links have been activated, we still need one more in order to fulfill the requirements of chain summoning. So we need a chain link three or higher. So we need another effect to activate. And so at this moment after we've just activated Goki Moonsault, I'm going to activate the effect of Goki Twist Cobra. Let's zoom in to Goki Twist Cobra. Goki Twist Cobra's effect will allow me to tribute itself so that to increase our Goki Monster's attack points equal to the tributed Goki Monster's attack points. So let's do so. I will zoom back out. And so now I will activate Goki Twist Cobra. This will now be a chain link three. When Goki Co uh, Twist Cobra activates tributes itself to increase the attack points of Goki Moon Assault, guess what? It will now be on a chain link three. So let us recap. On chain link one is the searching effect of Goki Octo Stretch, as it left it was this as it was destroyed by Goki Face Turn Special Summoning. Um, you know, a Goki monster from our graveyard. Then we would act. Then we activated on chain link two the effect of Goki Moonsault, returning Goki Suprex on the field to special su to our Goki Suprex to on the field to our hand to special sub with Moon Assault. Then afterwards we successfully activated the effect of Goki Twist Cobra, meaning by tributing Twist Cobra and increasing Goki Mo Moon Assaults attack points by 1600 points. This is now on a chain link three. Well, what do you know? The requirements for chain link summoning 
have been met, which means we can now activate it because we are now on a chain link 3 or higher and those are the requirements to activate chain summoning. So let's do this. Chain summoning is now activated. With chain summoning activated, this means I will now get an additional I will get additional of three summons this turn. And so when everything resolves, my hand should be looking a little bit like this. So Octo Stretch allowed me to add Headbat from my deck to my hand and Goki Twist Cobra allowed me to add Bear Hug from my deck to my hand. And now I have three more summons as well. So if we continue on the effect of Chain Summoning, we should have a board that's looking like this. Here is our final board with the Goki deck. So remember to activate trigger effects, you need a certain condition to be fulfilled and meet those cards activation requirements. Okay, that is all. Four, Ost effects. Ost effects continue. From the picture you saw earlier, Top of dichotomy, you can see that the price of activation is that one, you must activate it first, and two, you have no battle phase. Let me give you a visual demonstration so that you can see this. Alrighty then, we're going to talk about cost effects. So, let's go. Alrighty then, and so here is the board. So, let us read Pot of Dichotomy's effect. Zoom into it, and it says, At the start of your main phase, target three monsters with different types in your graveyard, shuffle three into the deck, then draw two cards. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card. Let's zoom back out. And so, what is why is Pot of Dichotomy a cost effect? Well, it is a cost effect because to activate this, it must be the first card I activate in the main phase. So I can't activate any other cards and I also do not have a battle phase when I successfully activate this card. So it has two prices that I need to pay to successfully activate it. However, when I do activate it, like so, so let us activate uh, Pot of Dichotomy. And so I will activate Pot of Dichotomy. So with Pot of Dichotomy, I'm going to shuffle three uh, monsters into my deck from my graveyard that are different types. So this is what I'm going to shuffle. Here are the monsters in my graveyard I'm going to shuffle. It's Nightmare Goblin, which is a fiend, Imduk, which is a dragon, and Nigirisu, which is a world chalice warrior. So I will shuffle these into my deck and then I will draw two cards, like so. So as you can see, I can extend to further plays and more combo wombos. But for now, we're going to stop right there because the aim of uh, this particular video is to just show you the effects of cost effects. So cost effects can appear on uh, monsters as well as spells and traps. I obviously used a uh, spell in this video because it is much easier to explain to you cost effects with uh, this particular spell and the price that you are paying. So, But most cost effects in Yu-Gi-Oh that involve monsters generally involve a form of payment in terms of either card advantage, life points, or you know, losing a particular phase so that you can get another mechanic. So for example, as with Pot of Dichotomy, we lost our battle phase so that we could draw two cards. We also lost the ability as well to activate any of our other cards in our main phase temporarily so that we could activate it first so that we can have the ability to draw two cards. Obviously, after we've activated Pot of Dichotomy, we can successfully activate the other cards in our hand, but uh, this is an example of just what I'm talking about here with the price. So we have two prices that we need to pay, and we pay them, and then we can proceed with our turn. 
and so that really is cost effects in Yu-Gi-Oh in regards to monsters, spells and traps. Okay, that is all. 5. Continuous Effects Continuous Effects continue. From the picture you saw earlier, Nightmare Phoenix, I will give you a visual demonstration of the continuous effect on this card. Alrighty then, now we're going to talk about continuous effects. So here we go. Let me show you a monster with a continuous effect. And here we have Nightmare Phoenix. Let's zoom in to Nightmare Phoenix. So let's read Nightmare Phoenix effect. If this card is link summoned, you can discard one card. <clears throat> then target one spell or trap your opponent controls. Destroy it. Then if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. You can only use this effect of Nightmare Phoenix once per turn. Co-linked monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. As you can see there, the continuous effect is the last line that says co-linked monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. Let's zoom back out. And so remember, any monster that has a continuous effect usually will have that sort of clause on it. Continuous monster effects in Yu-Gi-Oh are not activated effects, which means they cannot be negated by your opponent. You have to use, uh, you know, they have to use blanket effects. They have got to use effects that you know, negate, you know, like negate all face-up cards on the field, such sort of things. Uh, effects that basically affect all cards you control are able to get rid of continuous monster effects. So bear this in mind. That is all. Six, counter effects. Counter effects continued. From the picture you saw earlier of Trigate Wizard, I will show you a visual demonstration of the application of counter effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! So, we will now talk about counter effects. And so, what are counter effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! Counter effects are, uh, are monsters that have usually the word clause during either player's turn. Some may even have in brackets quick effect as well to show that they can activate during your opponent's turn as well so anyways let's go to the monster here that has the a counter effect and here we have a monster that has a counter effect let's go to trigate wizard this is the monster that has the counter effect. Let's zoom in to Trigate Wizard. Let's zoom in more to Trigate. So, let's read Trigate's effect. This card gains effect based on the number of co-linked to this card. 1. If a monster co-linked to this card battles the opponent's monster, any battle damage it inflicts to your opponent is doubled. Two, once per turn, you can target one card on the field, banish it. Three, once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can negate the activation. And if you do, banish that card. What we are interested in is that th um, third effect on Trigate Wizard. Since Trigate Wizard, as we can see here, if we go to the link arrows, is co-linked to three monsters, we will be able to activate that effect. If I just zoom in here, as you can see, Trigate is pointing to those three uh, monsters there. So, and essentially, if the opponent activates an effect, we can, once per turn, negate that effect, and if we do, banish the card. Let's zoom back out. And so essentially, that is Trigate Wizard with the counter effect. Remember that most counter effect monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh usually have the clause of during either player's turn or in brackets quick effect. Possibly they could even have both of those in the text box of the monster effect. So bear this in mind. That is all. You are now one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. 
my fate is in your hands. Like and subscribe. Hate and subscribe. You could decide to not subscribe at all. The choice is yours. Goodbye.